name is Chrissy Stonebreaker Martinez, and I'm the co-director of the Interreligious Task Force on Central America and Colombia. We're an international um, human rights organization, solidarity organization, um, a grassroots organization uh, rooted very much in Cleveland, Ohio. So I got connected to the organization as a Colombian uh, U.S. American who just um, really wanted to work on uh, um, justice and power building issues and be in solidarity with people. Um, and I've been there for uh, over seven years now as the co-director. Um, and we do international solidarity casework, but we also do a lot of mutual aid work on the ground here in Cleveland and we're um, we really see ourselves as people who are organizing and agitating for liberation uh, through education and advocacy as, as some, tac some of our tactics. In thinking about the question of who, of what, sh what has shifted in this time of pandemic and, and um, chaos and crisis, uh, I think for me, and you know, for a lot of um, black and indigenous people, uh, people of color, for um, other folks who see themselves as um, in struggle, we we just see more gatekeeping of the same thing, like I've seen systemic oppression clarified. I've seen it exacerbated, right? Um, we know that um, black and brown people in the US are um, more likely to be um, essential workers. They're also more likely to be laid off um, during the time of pandemic. There, um, there are more deaths in the indigenous and black communities. Uh, and that is because of, you know, underlying conditions. And what I've seen clarified um, by people who hold power, institutions who hold power, is more um, like a tighter control, is more gatekeeping, as I mentioned. It's increased surveillance. It's an enhanced uh, police state. It is... Um, it is uh, community foundations deciding what mutual aid groups, and remember mutual aid is like supposed to be a political um, act that says like it is radical to support and defend your neighbor. Um, and that if we do it in coordinated and non-hierarchical ways that it is more sustainable and that it is more holistic. Um, but I see community foundations, is including in my own city, not um, getting resources to the people that need them most. Uh, and the people that need resources most, you know, I feel like I'm constantly begging. I feel like a beggar and I'm humbled by that. But, I'm all, but I also know that it isn't right. You know, I cannot rely um, on any savior, and I want to make sure that um, the people who are invited to participate in um, my communities who contribute, you know, of their time, of their energy, of their own resources, that they are fully on board with, uh, you know, 100% liberation you know, with the beloved community we've been seeking to build with a new, um, a newer, brighter, better world that we know is possible. I think people should be organizing themselves in relation to their communities, um, understanding who they have relationships with, who, what relationships they depend on, um, and what is missing. I think that it would be great if people, it would be wonderful if people would 
um, find their local mutual aid network and uh, contribute to that network in um, whatever way like best suits their skills and talents because we need people to be thriving and to continue to have energy. My compas at Mi Gente, they, you know, they're so brilliant and beautiful and I love being part of a political familia with them, but they say that it doesn't take more of us, it takes more from us. So um, one way that I like hear that um, embodied like by a quote, for instance, would be Grace Lee Boggs when she says, transform yourself to transform the world. And when Adrian Marie Brown says, you know, we need to follow what is emerging. It reminds me of like um, being holistic about, um, about what will sustain us and really taking the time that we need for grief, for rest, for mourning, for joy, for creation, you know? Um, and speaking out when we know that like people are being inhibited from that, from the things that they need to take care of themselves. There are still people working multiple jobs in the midst of pandemic who should have a living wage, who should have health care, who should have at minimum personal protective equipment, right? There are still people who are on or underemployed who, you know, are being told by society that they, that they're not productive or that they're not um, contributing. And that's not true. That's completely false. Mm -hmm. There have been laws that have been passed that uh, make it possible for farm workers, you know, a lot of whom are undocumented, um, would be paid even less than they're already pay, being paid now, which is already under the federal win, minimum wage, which is already under what a living wage would constitute, right? All because of agricultural loopholes and, um, and the dominant economic system, you know, exerting power over, over um, people and putting profits over them. Yeah. It would look like people who are under resourced being resourced. It would look like people being free. Um, it would look like uh, a world that shares, a world that is um, open to um, movement of thought. Um, I think, I hope for the world, and I hope that this time can really teach us how to support and defend each other. I am continually inspired by people's resilience. I'm continually inspired by people's ability to um, persist uh, in the face of um, such extreme violence. Um, it would definitely look like making peace the new normal. It would look like ceasefire. It would look like debt relief, like Jubilee. It would look like freeing them all, abolishing ICE. You know, we used to exist without it. Um, it would look like immigration and naturalization services, not Customs and Border Patrol. And I have hope that that can happen because I've seen it happen on the small scale and I've seen it repeated over and over and over again. Um, but I do fear. I, I do have fear though. I know hope is my duty and it is my obligation. Um, if I wish to survive, I learned that from my um, indigenous family members in Colombia. Yeah. That they, you know, when people ask you, like, how do you have hope? Um, they might respond with, it is my job to have hope. Like, that is my command. It's my, it's my obligation. If I, if I don't have it, then um, 
then why persist? If we really believe that mutual aid is a political act, um, we have to remember that it is, um, that it's reciprocal, right? That it is, um, that there are no expectations, yeah. but that we're, that we are really seeking to build, right? And so um, there have been um, mutual aid efforts around the country, around the world that have been um, co-opted a bit uh, in this time because there's been such an influx of people who have wanted to give and be generous in their abundance um, of their spirit, of their resources, whatever, who um, haven't really thought about like what it really means to be interdependent, um, to be um, to rely on each other and not on our individual um, greed, right? What? So, so I would just say, like, really dig deep, um, really dig deep, and get your hands dirty, and um, stay as strong as you possibly can, yeah. and keep loving wastefully. It's really important to me to make peace the new normal, and I really want to talk about that today. I really want to make sure that we are centering ourselves in, um, in justice and in grassroots power building and community. So may <laughs> the God that you know and love call you to support and defend your neighbors. May the spirit of the community help you transform yourself before you seek to transform the world around you. And may you be moved to support Jubilee, total debt relief. May you be moved to support the Red New Deal and Green New Deal. May you be moved to support climate refugees everywhere. May you be moved to support Medicare for all, to support housing as a human right, and to support a God of love. Amen and Ashe.